to be the first American president to join you for Republic Day. Uh, with the tricolor waving above us, we celebrated the strength of your Constitution. We paid tribute to India's fallen heroes. In yesterday's parade, we saw the pride and the diversity of this nation, uh, including the daredevils on their royal Enfields, which was very impressive. Um, Secret Service does not let me ride motorcycles. Especially not on my head. I realize that the sight of an American president as your chief guest on Republic Day would once have seemed unimaginable, but uh, my visit reflects the possibilities of a new moment. As I've said many times, I believe that the relationship between India and the United States can be one of the defining partnerships of the century. When I spoke to your parliament on my last visit, I laid out my vision for how our two nations can build that partnership. And today I want to speak directly to you, the people of India, about what I believe we can achieve together and how we can do it. And my commitment to a new chapter between our countries flows from the deep friendship between our people. And Michelle and I have felt it ourselves. I recognized India with the first state visit of my pre presidency, uh, where we also danced to some uh, pretty good bhangra. For the first time, we brought uh, Diwali to the White House. On our last celebration here, on our last celebration here, we celebrated the Festival of Lights in Mumbai. Uh, we danced with some children. Uh, unfortunately, we were not able to schedule any dancing this visit. Senorita, what do you They show me. You, you know what I mean. So, <laughs> everybody said, by the way, how much better a dancer Michelle was than me, which hurt my feelings a little bit. On a more personal level, I. Uh, well, India represents an intersection of two men who have always inspired. When Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. was protesting racial segregation in the United States, he said that his guiding light was Mahatma Gandhi. When Dr. King came to India, he said that being here in Gandhi's land, reaffirmed his conviction that in the struggle for justice and human dignity, the most potent weapon of all is nonviolent resistance. And those two great souls are why we can gather here today, Indians and Americans, equal and free. And there's another link that binds us. More than a hundred years ago, America welcomed a son of India, Swami Vivekananda. And so Vivekananda helped bring Hinduism and yoga to our country. And he came to my hometown of Chicago. And there, at a great gathering of religious leaders, he spoke of his faith and the divinity in every soul and the purity of love. And he began his speech with a simple greeting Sisters and brothers of America. So today, let me say, sisters and brothers of India. My confidence in what our nations can achieve together is rooted in the values that we share. For we may have our different histories and speak different languages. But when we look at each other, we see a reflection of ourselves. Having thrown off colonialism, we created constitutions that began with the three same words. 